With Halloween upon us, the time of terror and fright is here. And although, yes, our main focus here at Wicked Binge has been cartoons and animation, we thought it would be fun to dig into some of our favorite horror and slasher movies and try to figure out once and for all which killer is the most evil. Now, let's set up the rules. Originally, we were planning on focusing exclusively on slasher films, but there were a few killers that we wanted to feature from horror movies that don't quite fit the criteria of the slasher film. So we're expanding a bit, but limiting our picks to killers from horror movies who have murdered at least one person and are the focal point of their respective film. We'll be factoring in each killer's brutality and sadism, as well as their motives, their upbringing, and of course, their cruelty and body counts. I'm Kyle with Wicked Binge. Turn on a nightlight, because this is good to evil slasher and horror movie killers. Well, maybe evil to, you know, most evil. Welcome to my nightmare. Starting off our list, we have Jack Torrance. The Shining isn't quite a slasher movie by the subgenre's definition, but that doesn't stop Jack from trying to hunt his own family down with an axe. Here's Johnny! So you may be saying, how does a guy who tries to murder his own kid with an axe rank this low on an evil list? Well, the truth is, Jack becomes a psychopath because of supernatural intervention. He isn't psychotic until he arrives at the estate. He's just a significantly flawed husband and father. It's the supernatural force that turns Jack into an axe-wielding maniac. Sure, Jack struggles with alcoholism, has a history of domestic abuse, and seems like he might harbor some racist views. But I don't know if you can hold him responsible for whatever demonic possession occurred while he was isolated away at the estate. And if everything that occurred truly was out of his power, then he was also a victim given the fact that he died in the end too. Next up is Samara, that creepy little girl from The Ring. Seriously, those twisted faces are things of nightmares. Anyway, Samara is more than just a spirit who's seeking vengeance. And she has a really good reason to be pissed off, to say the least. I mean, her parents kept her in a barn and then eventually threw her down a well where she slowly died over the course of seven days. She was brutally murdered by the person who was supposed to keep her safe. And here's the thing about Samara. Some argue she doesn't kill for joy or because it pleases her, it's because it's the only thing that will keep her in existence. But I do, and I'm sorry. But then again, even if there is an element of sadism in which she does enjoy murder, it's definitely out of some very understandable anger. I mean, you have to feel for her. Being thrown down a well and left for dead is a terrible way to go. I'm talking about time before we die. Okay. Possibly one of the more underrated slasher movie villains is up next, the Candyman. You're mine now. I would argue that although we're obviously in the spectrum of evil somewhere, right now we're dealing with characters who were horribly wronged and ultimately were made the way that they are because of a terrible injustice. And the Candyman is a perfect example. He's evil, sure, but he wasn't always that way. And in many ways we can at least understand why he turns to killing. The son of a former slave who comes into money, the Candyman grows up living a decent life and eventually falls in love with a woman of a different race. This angers several bigots who cut off his hand and cover him in honey until he's stung to death by bees. Candyman was stung to death by the bees. Now an urban legend, he's forced to kill in order to remain in existence, a backstory that many horror fans are sympathetic to. A similarly sympathetic killer is Carrie from the Stephen King book slash movie of the same name. Maybe not quite the injustice of the Candyman, but Carrie never really had a chance in life. What with a deranged fanatical mother and pretty much every student she comes in contact with bullying her. Carrie definitely turns to evil, there's no doubt, but we can see that she wasn't always that way. That said, she ended up with a hell of a body count that we really can't overlook. Next up, we're throwing in Norman Bates, from the Hitchcock horror classic Psycho. Frankly, if we were ranking these killers based on how creepy they are, Norman would be pretty high up there. But we're ranking him pretty low because he suffers from dissociative identity disorder and hallucinations, to the point where he, in his own mind, became his own mother, who would then kill the women who he personally found arousing. 
Honestly, we imagine this guy's upbringing did a real number on him to say the least. But I hate to even think about it. Next up may surprise many, but we're putting Hannibal Lecter next. The serial killer who ate his victims, it may seem like a cannibal should rank higher, but let me explain. If you look at the good doctor's backstory, you'll see that when he was young, fleeing Nazis, he was forced by cannibals to eat his own sister. After growing up traumatized and obsessing over the loss of his sister, the first person he kills is a racist who insults his family. In Hannibal, his victims include a child abuser and corrupt politicians. And yes, he has killed many innocent people, such as the prison guards in Silence of the Lambs. I guess what we're saying is, with some of his kills, he did get rid of some bad people. Next up, we have Leatherface. And I'll just say it, Leatherface wasn't evil. He was just defending his property. Okay, that's not true. He was evil. But let's try to analyze who this monster was. Did Leatherface slay a bunch of teenagers with a chainsaw? Yes. But did he also wear their skin on his face as a mask? Also yes. Okay, this defense is a bit more difficult than I thought, but what I'm trying to get at is that Leatherface's murders don't necessarily come from a place of pure evil, but a misguided conditioning from his psychotic family, who tell him that everyone is an intruder and a threat to him and his family. It's also evident that Leatherface is mentally disabled. He has a degenerative neurological disorder and is even seen playing with toys. It seems like this guy just doesn't know what he's really doing. And it's probably safe to say that the most evil characters in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre are his family members. Moving on to Ben Willis, the hook killer. Hopefully I don't anger fans of the movie, but I always felt that I Know What You Did Last Summer was one of the more boring and least creative slasher movies of its time. But it's worth noting because it's a slasher film that focuses on a killer who, yes, kills teenagers, but he specifically kills the teenagers who killed him. If he only killed the people people who killed him as revenge, I'd argue that he wouldn't even necessarily be evil. I mean, the dude would just kind of be collecting debts. What if he didn't die, Ray? What if he's still alive? But he kills innocent people too, like the police officer, or everybody in the sequel. So yeah, definitely evil, but also another guy who got screwed over pretty hard. Another ranking that might surprise you, we're placing Jason Voorhees next. Now, admittedly, this guy probably has the biggest body count of any movie villain when you add up all of his films. He's been to hell, he's been to space, he's been to Manhattan, and although the endless sequels really destroyed any nuance to his character, if we look at the true essence of who he is, based on the better writing in the film series, you'll see that our buddy Jason was, at one point, an innocent little boy who was born deformed and who was constantly bullied by other kids, until he eventually drowned at Camp Crystal Lake. Does that justify his killing sprees? Of course not, but given that he was a total outcast and hated by everyone in the world other than his mother, you can see why he's so angry. And for that matter, next is Mrs. Voorhees, the original Friday the 13th killer. Again, were her actions justified? Of course not. She killed innocent people who weren't responsible for her son's death. They just happened to work at the same place where he drowned. And yes, Mrs. Voorhees was unquestionably evil, but you can at least understand the anger harbored by a mother who lost her son. But given the fact that she exclusively kills innocent people, she is unquestionably evil, just like her son. Frankly, the reason why we ranked her as more evil than Jason is because Jason's perspective is essentially that of a young child who was constantly bullied and casted out by society and may not even fully understand that people can be good, given that all he experienced was negativity. Kill her, mommy. Kill her. Moving on, Michael Myers, the Rob Zombie version. Now, many horror fans will say that the Rob Zombie Halloween remake sucked, that it completely portrayed Michael Myers in a way that is antithetical to what made Michael Myers such a terrifying villain. But I'll actually defend the movie to a certain extent. Although showing Michael's backstory and abuse growing up takes away from him being the manifestation of pure evil, I actually really dug the first act of the movie because the cast was really great and the dialogue was well written. I feel like if it wasn't a Halloween movie, it would have been a great starting point for a different story. But the point is, because we see Michael's terrible upbringing, bullying, and abusive stepfather, Take that damn thing off. it takes away from the overall being born evil theme that the original killer had. Still very evil, yes, but not quite as much. I was coming, you 
Moving on, we have Billy Loomis, aka Ghostface. Yes, there are several killers throughout the Scream series, but Billy is definitely the most memorable. What's the matter, Sydney? You look like you've seen a ghost. With Scream being more of a witty satire than it is a slasher movie, it may be weird to see Billy ranked as more evil than Jason or Leatherface. But the truth is, where Jason and Leatherface had unimaginably horrible upbringings that shaped who they became, as well as mental disabilities that probably stopped them from understanding right and wrong to a certain extent, Billy doesn't really have an excuse. He's just a total psychopath desperate for notoriety. Movies don't create psychos. Movies make psychos for creative death. Okay, up next is a big name, Jigsaw. So I'm completely familiar with the argument for why Jigsaw shouldn't be looked at as that evil, given the fact that he typically targets people guilty of wrongdoing. And yes, I'll dock him a couple points for this because I think his sort of code is interesting and perhaps not as sadistic as other killers, but I totally call BS on anyone that says that Jigsaw isn't evil. In my opinion, Jigsaw is one of the most evil and terrifying slasher killers out there. Not only are the ways in which he kills people more terrifying than anything that Jason or Michael Myers have ever done, the ways that he kills are especially cruel and torturous. And the argument that he's not that evil because he targets people guilty of various bad things or crimes is a weak one given the fact that some of the things that he's targeted people for include infidelity or drug addiction, or even things like racism or thievery. Not to defend any of that negativity, but almost none of the crimes or actions of his victims warrant death. Now, full disclosure, the top four are so evil it's hard to even determine who's worse, but we'll try. At number four, we have Chucky. In our opinion, the goofiest slasher movie killer, and I never personally understood the appeal, but when you look at Chucky, he is an irredeemably evil character from start to finish. Even before becoming a doll, Chucky is a serial killer who uses voodoo to transfer his soul in an effort to escape the police. So we're not off to a good start, and it's all downhill from there. Chucky is really just interested in terrorizing people, killing people, and even diverting his attention from killing his targets to kill other people just for fun. He's proud of his homicidal behavior and has absolutely no morals. I guess if we had to say one nice thing about Chucky, it would be, uh, he has a good sense of humor. You have a date with death. All right, top three now, and we're back to Michael Myers. But this time, the original, superior version. Michael Myers is widely accepted as the greatest slasher movie killer in the genre's history because Halloween was the film that really put the subgenre on the map. But what makes him so evil is the fact that it's made abundantly clear that he kills simply because it's in his nature. In one of the greatest scenes in horror movie history, Dr. Loomis monologues about looking into his eyes and seeing nothing but pure evil. The blackest eyes. The devil's eyes. There isn't a reason for it. He wasn't raised poorly, he hasn't suffered some great injustice, he simply exists to kill. He is a manifestation of our fears, someone hiding behind a mask that could be around any corner at any time, waiting to kill you, simply because he exists to kill. Could it be something supernatural or demonic controlling him? It doesn't matter. It's just what he does. No remorse, nothing. We ranked Michael higher than Chucky simply because, technically, we don't know what Chucky's childhood was like. Maybe there was some element that could be sympathized with. In all honesty, they're probably right on par with one another, but we'll give Michael Myers the slight edge because he's the OG slasher movie killer. At number two, we're throwing in Pennywise. First off, the clown's ability to terrorize people is something straight up supernatural, which allows it to be especially cruel. There's also something indescribably evil about feeding off the fear of people, specifically children, while hunting them down and eating them. I mean, Pennywise literally bit a child's arm off and pulled him into a sewer. I think it's safe, just thematically, to place him as more evil than Michael Myers, mainly because it's something so evil that it's beyond human and a manifestation of fear itself. But then again, maybe the lack of a human element makes him less evil than Michael Myers. I suppose it's all just how you look at it. And finally, coming in as the most evil killer is none other than Freddy Krueger. After much thought, we decided that Freddy is the most evil, even beating out Michael Myers and Chucky. Freddy's killings throughout the Nightmare on Elm Street series were as brutal as Jason's were throughout Friday the 13th. Make them remember what 
I'd also argue that his violence was far more creative, but what truly separates him apart from Jason, Michael, Chucky, Leatherface, and the rest was the simple fact that prior to the films, when he was alive, he was known specifically for killing children. In fact, he was known for killing dozens of children, as he bragged about it in Freddy vs. Jason. This adds a layer of sick and twisted vile evil that surpasses the rest. But Pennywise targeted children too, I'm sure many will say. Well, that's true, and really the only slight distinction that we can point to that makes Freddy just a smidge worse is the fact that Pennywise needed to feed on children to live. Freddy, when alive, chose to become a serial child murderer because he enjoyed it, not because he needed to to survive. The mere fact that Freddy murdered children specifically makes him the most evil horror movie killer of all time, at least in our opinion. But what do you think? Who do you think is the most evil horror or slasher movie killers? Who do you think is the most, um, you know, least evil? Let us know in the comments section below, and remember to let us know what cartoon or show we should feature on Good to Evil next. Don't forget to hit that notification bell, and most importantly, stay wicked.